right, all right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Good evening, good afternoon. So welcome to the next episode of uh, At the Table with Urban Forex. I have here with me Armo, Lucas, and Ian. Uh, my name is Naveen Prithiani, myself. And wherever you guys are tuning in from, whether it be Apple, Google, Spotify, or you're watching it here on YouTube, or in anticipation of the webinar that's coming up after this podcast, welcome uh, to the room and, and thanks for tuning in. So today is a very important topic. What are we talking about today? Hey, Lucas, what are we, what are we talking about today? Dogecoin. Dogecoin. <laughs> uh, it, it, it is a very popular topic, but... But uh, I think I think more than Dogecoin, we want to step it up a little bit and and, and talk about <laughs> the the importance of learning how to to learn. Is that is that a good way to say it? The best way to learn how to trade. The best way to learn how to trade. Okay, so you know I know when you probably read the title of this podcast, uh, it might sound like oh. I think there's going to be a strategy that's going to be talked about in this podcast and he's going to show me what exactly must I do to make, you know, millions of dollars in less than 30 minutes. But unfortunately, that's not the case in this podcast. We're talking about how do you learn fast? Okay, how do you actually learn fast? Now, now all of you guys in here right now, um, what, what would you say your experiences are with um, learning fast? Do you think this is an issue, uh, Ian? Would you say this is something that can help people um, if they learn the art of learning faster? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I think always learning the correct way to go about your training is always going to speed everything up. I mean, you can't, you can't always just read fast, you know, to absorb the information. You also need the right techniques too, to go along with it. So for sure, I think it helps. Yeah. So, so is, is then, let me ask you guys this then. So is, Okay, let's say I read 100 words per minute. Is reading 5,000 words a minute the solution? No, not necessarily. Your Unless brain... you want to be a reader, right? I get it. But, <laughs> <laughs> <it's> like... <laughs> but for the sake of trading, what do you guys think might be a, a good way to go about it? How do you learn faster? I think there are a lot of ways to do that. It's, it's like you said, we can give you all the tools you need, but if you are not able to learn how to use those tools, um, just knowing how to use those tools doesn't, doesn't really matter. And uh, I, I think one of the best ways to learn faster is to tr it's, it's through repetition. Like repetition, more you do, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's an, that's an interesting thing, uh, repetition. And I think it touches base on, you know, some of a uh, latest service that we've recently provided in our Mastering Price Action 2.0. Okay, let's talk about repetition though. Why is repetition so important? I mean, when, when we talk about repetition, I think the first thing that comes to our minds is probably that image of Bart Simpson's on the board writing, I will not <laughs> bunk class or I will not run out of my classroom or something just over and over again, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah the, the other thing that yeah. came across when I thought about repetition was uh, the famous Bruce Lee quote um, where he said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. There you go. There you really, go. that's the difference there. Yeah. Well, it's another popular saying, right? I have um, a jack of all trades, master of none. That's a very common thing as well. Yeah. So how does repetition help though, yeah, Armo? How does well, it, it, it's how the brain works, right? So um, when you learn something new, the, the best way of, you know, to, to cement it is to take a break from it, step away from it, then try to repeat it inside your mind and then look at the information again. And then it will be, you know, first of all, you will uh, recognize it easier. But by looking at it again, after you've, you know, tried to think about it, uh, it cements so much better. And then if, if you do this process a few times, you know, this is solid. This will never leave your mind again right. or leave your memory again. All right. So let me, let me ask you guys this then. So um, we, we have a doctor, okay, who's extremely, extremely, extremely smart. He's got every single degree underneath the planet and you need surgery being done. And there's this guy who has every degree known to mankind in the medical field. And then you have one guy who specializes 
in what you need done. And he's done that surgery 50,000 times with a 99% accuracy. Who would you go for? The smart guy or the rep- the guy who's done it over and over and over again? The specialist. The, no doubt. Yeah, the repetition. The repetition goes a long way. Yeah. There is a power behind repetition that I think we all underestimate um, that uh, it really, really changes the turns on how do you learn? How do you, how do you actually get behind something that, you know, especially in trading, repetition is key. This is why there, we use a lot of these um, replays and back testing and forward testing and all these systematic tools that come with trading, right? These days where they're like, you can replay the market and practice what you know. And yeah, it's what it's you know. training. Like people call it back testing, but it's, it's actually training. Like right. training for your job and your job is to trade. Exactly. Now, so repeating and all these things. So having said that, if I want to learn how to trade, I have multiple options, right? I can go to the bookstore. I can buy a book. I can read that book and I'll be done with that book. And then I know more than I knew before that book, right? I can do the opposite. I can say, I'm not a 2D person. I need a 3D environment. I'm going to get online. I'm going to watch a video in VR format or whatever. And I'm going to learn and take classes. But that video is recorded. It goes from the beginning until the end, and then you're done. How do you really get that repetition in? What can you do as a trader to get that repetition in? You might be sitting there saying, I need to learn. I got to get good at this. And I am not lazy. I can actually do this. So I picked up all the books out there. I've studied every YouTube video out there. I've taken courses, but yet my progress is just isn't there yet. But I know I'm very close. Oh, you look for examples on the life market of, of those principles, principles Sorry, that were taught to you in that book or in that video. There you go. Then you're you're putting it into practice, but in a safe way where you're not risking, uh, you know, your account balance because you always have to protect your account balance. There you go. There you go. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, um, earlier in this year uh, and uh, some time ago last year as well, we started introducing the daily examples in our training program. Right. We we actually had this discussion, I believe, a year ago when we said. How important is repetition? Um, you can't just buy a book and then learn everything and, and hope to, you know, hope to master the markets. You can't just watch a simple video and hope to master the markets. By getting those examples coming in live every single day from the markets, that really will give you that repetition that you need to really take your level of learning to the whole new level. And if you do that with a little bit of a delay in between, like you said, Armo, that you know, take a break, step away from it, come back and look at it again. And that repetition really will uh, kick in. It'll really kick yeah, in. And with, with those examples, it will also be here for people to um, see, you know, which which principles are in, in trading that they are, uh, you know, a little weaker on. Because right. then you're looking at that example, you might not be able to understand it immediately or, um, you know, maybe you're looking for these examples yourselves and then you compare it to the examples that we share and uh, there's, you know, they're not matching exactly. Then, you know, okay, this is this topic specifically, there's some work to do here. Right, right. Another thing yeah. too, like with the examples, like they're not always, especially with trading, the topic can be discussed in a systematic form in a book, but it doesn't, even though the concepts are all the same on the chart, it's helped seeing different ones every day as well repetition of seeing because they can although they're all the same principle viewing different examples every on a constant basis will give you okay that one's the same it just looks a little different here or you know this one's i get how they're the same but it's good to see them on the chart uh to see how they can vary as well you know Um, yeah yeah I think on, on this same topic, a lot of traders, like uh, especially new traders, when they think about repetition, they'll go onto the charts and they want to look for one specific pattern and they hope to see that pattern over and over and over again. But that's just not the case with the market because the market is always changing slightly, some days more than none, uh, some days more than other days. So I 
I think we do a really good job with some of the examples um, from the MPA 2.0, where the, the, the pattern or the chart may look slightly different, but the concept is, is always the same. So right. I think that's a really yeah. good point um, Ian brought up there. Right. It's actually just like driving, right? It's the same systematic approach of how you get in, how you start the car, how you leave and go from destination A to B. But that destination, that route will ever so vary every time, every single time. You won't have the same cars in the traffic. You won't have the same red lights. Uh, sometimes you get them all green. You're like It will ever so vary, but the driving is exactly the same every single time. But maybe the next time you might have a coffee in one hand so it's ever so slightly different, okay? So it's just like that, but repeating it over and over again, your brain learns to automatically adjust to the small nuisances that might arise. All right, so. so you become a heart surgeon and you know how to do heart surgery. Yeah, there you go. Your... There you go. And and if there is a doctor watching this who has every degree underneath the, underneath the sun, I am, I'm sorry, I, I do respect your education that you put into it. But I will still go with the guy who has a lot more experience than a person who just has knowledge. Okay. Um, uh, okay. I saw one person just left the channel. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dr. Ramesh has left the room. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. All right. Well, okay. So repetition definitely is a very, very big thing. What else? What else? What else can we do to learn better, learn faster, learn more efficiently? One thing I thought of actually, uh, it's, it's felt in a lot of parts of life, but especially with the trading is you always want to surround yourself with um, people who have done it before, uh, experienced people, um, people you can look up to um, that you can learn from, like to, to just hang around with I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I got lots of great friends, but none of them know anything about trading. So if I want to like succeed in trading, I'll maybe have fun with them on the side. But when I want to learn how to trade, I want to surround myself with better traders, more experienced. Uh, I can see how what they've accomplished in life. It helps me motivate me to keep going. And right. they have the experience and the, the repetition again that I can learn from uh, from them as well. Like. I really like how you said that, actually. Um, you know, um, I've been in urban forex for what? Over a decade now. Like, all this white hair comes from urban you forex. You are urban forex. <laughs> like, you, you're not in urban forex. <laughs> urban forex is in you. Yeah, well, okay. Well, well, urban forex has been around. Since it's been around, I've, I've been around together with urban forex. And the, the whole concept of what, Ian, you just said about learning from more experienced people, um, Starting off, I see tons of traders saying, me and my buddy were learning to do this. Me and my friend, me and my wife, me and my husband, me and my uncle were learning trading together. The thing is, when you, when you work with someone at your own caliber, you don't learn as much. The process is a lot slower. It's like a blind man helping a blind man saying, let me help you cross the street. I know the street. And well, that guy's blind too. It's like wh wh what's going to happen? You know, it's very dangerous. But when you learn from someone who's been there, done that, they might not give you the time that you would expect, but their limited number of, uh, amount of time that they give you will still be far superior than you getting 24 hours from a person who's at your own level. Does that make sense? Like just spending like an hour with someone who's far more experienced than you in that industry will be a lot more valuable than spending an entire week putting in 20 hour days with someone who's at your caliber saying, I think if we do this, then we'll make some money. I think if we do this, then, then the pullback will work better. I think if we do this, then this system will work. But that's a perfect illustration of a guessing game. It is. Yeah. It is. It's just two people guessing at the same time instead of one. <laughs> like you're increasing your odds of guessing better, but you're still guessing, right? So it is a lot. It is important uh, that you surround yourself, like Ian says, with people with a little bit more experience. There's a there's a famous saying that you are the average of the closest five people you hang out with, or spend the most time with. 
So if the five people you're, you're closest to or the ones you hang out with the most are lazy, have no potential future, they're not doing as much as you're doing, chances are they're going to drag you down. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And the flip side is true. If you're the lazy guy and all four of your friends are high achievers and go-getters, they'll pull you up automatically because you're going to start feeling bad and you want to be like them, right? So you will end up becoming that way. Okay, you will end up becoming that way. So it's a very powerful saying that you are the average of the closest five people you hang out with. Yeah, and I think on, on that that topic, um, I used to think about that a lot. And I always wondered, okay, so I, I need to hang out with these uh, five people that's smarter than me, you know, more knowledgeable than me. And then I guess it's just not me, like for a lot of people who are listening or watching this as well, they, they'll be wondering, where do I find these five people's uh, five people in, in my life but actually in in this day and age it's very easy to get these so-called five people because all you need to do is look up online maybe look for a mentor or listen to podcasts those will become those five people in your life and then those are the stuff you want to surround yourself with. Doesn't necessarily have to be a friend. It can be someone online. Well, like Urban Forex, like Naveen, or some of the podcasts, that kind of thing. Um, so that's a that's a roadblock that I used to have, but now I understand. You know, in 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 this day and age, it's much more easier to do. Absolutely, I, I think I think that's a good point as well. You don't actually physically or or personally need to know the person just by watching that content from that same individual that inspires you over and over again, could be that one person that you add on and saying, all right, I'm, I'm learning from him or her, whether it's a Ted talk or something you see on vice or whatever it may be that you look up to and saying, okay, you know, I want to be like that. Or, you know, you're watching shark tank or something and that's inspiring you and to making you think outside the box. The more you do these things, the better you become. Now, isn't this the same, same truth behind people who watch these uh, crime investigations? They, if they watch enough of it, if just a glass of water goes missing from their table, their brain will start solving a mystery in like, you know what? <laughs> I left this glass here at 4.55 p.m. yesterday. Now it's not there. I want to see fingerprints brush this table with powder. <laughs> like they go hardcore <laughs> into that, that level of that thing. sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> My partner changed the temperature of the AC uh, last, last weekend. And I found out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, if, the more you, you start spending time with the stuff that you like, the more your brain starts thinking that way. It's really funny actually. So having that said, so repetition is a very, very big one. Um, hanging out with uh, people who know more than you, or at least finding if you can get access to that is very, very valuable. So for example, let me tell you, ask you guys this thing. Let's say I want to be a, be a trader, right? But I'm not doing anything in my life to be a trader. I'm not really studying. I'm hoping to just jump onto someone's back and saying, I'm going to become a trader because he's trying to become a trader too. And hopefully he'll drag me along with it. That never happens. In real life, you can't just hang on to someone and then hope you become a trader. That's never going to happen because it's a personal game. It is not someone else's victory and then you will automatically succeed. It's not a company. In a company, you can do that. As a trader, you cannot. It is you as your own physical fitness, sort of like as if you're running a marathon. Either you win the marathon or you don't. It's as simple as that. But your friend winning the marathon will not do anything for you. It will not do anything for you, okay? At the end of the day, he will get the medal. He'll get the prizes. He might give you a little something on the side, but it won't do anything for your future, okay? So you have to remember that. You have to remember that. So if I join a Telegram group that says, a free group for traders, how useful will that be for me? It won't. It won't. It's going to be a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of opinions. Everyone screaming on top of their lungs, I am right, I am right, you are wrong, you are wrong. It's not getting anywhere. Probably you'll get a bunch of scammers in there as well. There, there, there will always be scammers in there, right? So it, it slows you down. It slows you down. 
So a lot of the work that comes into picking the right people, uh, some research needs to go into it to find out why do I want to listen to Warren Buffett? Why do I want to listen to Paul Tudor Jones? You know, doing your background, doing your research, and then going hardcore into it makes you a better trader. So repetition was one. Finding ways to spend time, more time, or asking questions to someone who's uh, senior to you in your in your field. Yeah, that's important. What else? What else? The one golden key. Ah, so I, I, I know that I, I know this is the one that you, you personally like. This is like <laughs> the, the most gangster, gangster way to become a better trader. What is it, Armo? Give it away. Post analysis. Post analysis. Post analysis. All right. So, How many of you guys here who are... already dropped it in the comments, I see. Nice. Yeah, comment. yeah, I, I see it in the comments too. It's starting to come out. All of you guys in this room, how many of you guys uh, who's attending live here right now can say post analysis is if you don't have your five friends, if you don't have repetition power, post analysis is your answer. Post analysis is the best way. Now, all right, you guys have been around in the industry as a mentor and as a coach for ages and ages and ages. I want to hear all the downsides first about the post analysis of, of people, of people who don't do post analysis, people who do some post analysis and people who run away from it. I want to hear all the downsides of it first before we go into the pros. Let's hear all the cons. Why you shouldn't do post analysis? Why people don't do post analysis. Oh, that, well, there's excuses. Mm -hmm. Like it takes time or the same old excuses you'll get, you'll get for everything. It, it takes time or people are too shy to do it. Even if they are only sharing it with themselves, people have technical issues where if, if you want to talk about post analysis, where you record yourself, well, they don't know how to do that. Um, or they forget about it in the heat of the moment, because, you know, part of the post analysis, it starts the moment you start to do your analysis or when you're done with your analysis or, and then they, they do the trade and then they forget to do, you know, to write down any notes that they could use later on for post analysis. So yeah, there's a bunch of excuses, none of them good. Yeah. Isn't it kind of funny? All we need is one experience in real life to change the way we think, but it doesn't happen in trading. Let me explain. You go to a supermarket, you see a person standing outside the supermarket, completely hooded up and everything. And you get this feeling of, I think he's going to ask me for money or he's going to rob me. One of those things where you get that tingling feeling and your spider senses start going over, whatever you want to call it, where you're feeling weird. You're like, what is going on? Even though you're trying not to be prejudiced and that comes up somehow and it proves to be right. What do you think is going to happen the second time you go to the supermarket? and you see that same design or everything again, what will happen? Run. Run well, the, the brain, the brain, <laughs> as much as you might say, no, give everybody a fair chance. This world cannot be painted with one brush. Your brain as a pattern recognition monster will say, be careful. When it comes to trading, when we make a loss, why doesn't the brain pick up on that though? Why doesn't the brain pick up on Hey, when you did this last time, it's a loss. Be careful when you're getting into the next trade. I think Why the so most hard? famous, I think the most famous thing amongst all traders and the most costly one is this time it will be different. This time it'll be different. <laughs> yes. This time it'll be different. That was last time. That's okay. This time it's better. It's going to work this time. You know, it's like I you said, Luke, the doll with me. slightly different now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it's hope is all time high. Skipping post analysis comes with an idea of, oh, I lost a trade. I made a loss or a small win, whatever it might be. And the brain immediately goes, oh, I know, I know. I know why I made the mistake. Okay, that's my fault. And we brush it off and go directly into the next opportunity. Why? Why does that happen? You're good at bullshitting yourself. That, that's you know, that's every human is... Huh. is an absolute action, no, an, an actual master at bullshitting him or herself. And there it is. Uh, what you do with post analysis is you, you write it down and, you know, writing down bullshit is a lot harder, uh, or you record yourself and then you see yourself speaking. And again, it becomes a lot harder to, to play that trick on yourself. 
Yeah. And I saw, yeah. I just saw somebody in the comments saying, uh, yeah, there's no one to critique my PA, but it doesn't even matter. You, you're your own critique there. And as soon as you start writing it down or recording yourself, you're no longer tricking yourself. Yeah. I don't know how many of you guys here in the room, you know, we got like 500 plus people listening in right now. Um, I don't know how many of you guys here in the room actually have um, gone through the motivation and daily routines that we have set up. In that, in that program, we talk about how the mind is the weakest link when it comes to power, which means if in your mind you think I'm going to do better, if in your mind you think I know what the problem is and here's how I'm going to solve it, it's the least powerful methodology from cha for changing. That if you take it a step higher, which means you verbalize it, you say it with your mouth, you bring it out into reality. That's the second most, uh, second least powerful. The third one is while, while verbalizing it, you also write it down. Now you put it into paper. It is, it is now onto paper. Your thoughts have left your body and yes. come on to the real world, whether in voice, now with voice on paper. You take the fourth step above that, which means you take action, physical conscious action towards it that's where the real change comes in so by recording a pa you are already taking that actionable step of you're telling yourself by hitting that record button and saying i am doing this pa but subconsciously you're telling yourself i want to get better it starts with that red button being clicked and you're saying i am doing this because i want to be better whether the PA is done in a horrible way, you know, that shouldn't be done, which is what we're going to talk about in the upcoming webinar on how to do your PAs to perfection. But just by doing that action, you're saying, I didn't do good. I want to be better. Or I did good. I still want to be better. Okay. It, PAs are not just for people who are losing. PAs are people for who want to perform, who want to be better than yesterday. Yeah. So post analysis. Yeah. Sorry, Arma, what were you saying? Yeah, being able to replicate that that win that you just did, being able to do it again and doing it, doing it again consistently. And with size, right? And with size. How will you know that when your when your setup that you like to trade comes up again? How do you know, like, oh, that's the one. I like it when it's exactly like that. You know what? I'm gonna size up this time. Okay. You can yeah, only think, get I that think... confidence with that repetition through the post analysis. Uh, Ian, yeah. I think PAs are even like the best for, for losing trades as, as hard as it is, as hard as it is to admit that maybe you did something wrong, which is maybe another reason why people don't do them sometimes. Actually that like admitting that you did wrong, even to yourself and bringing it out there it goes a long way to improve. And like, trust me, like I've done a lot of post analysis and like, after you hear yourself repeat the same mistake multiple yeah. times, like you get kind of tired of of saying the same thing to yourself over and over again and you change, right? Right. And it just, it helps reinforce the good and the bad, I guess. It's not always bad, but it's the good and the bad, whether you did something right or wrong. So. Right, right. It, it's so powerful, I can't tell you. So I'll, I'll, let's, let's step into the pros of the post-analysis. I remember several years ago um, when uh, I rented out a, a cabin out in uh, Switzerland and I flew in uh, Lucas and some of the uh, colleagues at that time. Uh, Lucas, I think you remember the cabin we were out in the French Alps, not we went through Switzerland, but it's the French Alps. If I say Swiss Alps, they get angry. So the French Alps side that we were in. <laughs> you remember that Morzine yeah, right? we were in? Yeah, yeah Morzine, that's the one. Even with trading well, okay, for years and years of trading well under my belt, and I do PAs well under my belt. There are still times that I personally go on tilt sometime where I have to talk to someone. I remember, I still remember this day very, very carefully where I told Lucas, like, Lucas, I need to speak to you. And we stepped outside into the balcony. It's freaking snowing and stuff outside, but we're still out there in the balcony. He's smoking away. And I'm telling him, listen, I don't know if you're going to understand anything I'm saying. I just want you to listen because I need to get this out of my system. And the first thing that came out of my system was I'm not trading so well. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that me being your mentor right now, and you're here to train, I'm trying to prove something to you by me letting go of that ego 
it's basically a post analysis, right? By me letting go of that ego, I calm down, I neutralize, and I can reboot. Many people don't reboot without that uh, self-reflection. They can't. Their ego is too strong to let themselves reboot. They don't reboot. How many guys here agree with that? What about you guys? What about you guys here? Ian, Armo, Lucas, you guys agree? It helps you reboot, right? Yeah, definitely. It helps you reboot. It helps you reboot. Self-reflection is, is key. Not, not just in trading, but anything in life. You know, you want to be a good partner to, to your husband or you to, to your wife. You want to be a good uh, father or mother or aunt or uncle, whatever. It may be a good friend. Um, you know, self-reflection, being open to critique, doing something with it, and, and showing yourself uh, in, a, in a vulnerable position as well. Yeah. yeah, because that's that's what's probably stopping many people from, you know, doing self reflection. Is it, it could you could put yourself in a very vulnerable uh, position. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's the and it's even it's even harder today, right? Wouldn't we say with the world being so busy, our schedules being so busy, we don't even get time to think about our actions and saying, was that right? Was that wrong? Did I hurt someone's feeling? Should I have not said that? We just go through it like, okay, next, I got to go to this meeting or next, I got to go to my job. I got to pick up my kid. We don't have time to think of our own actions and evaluate it. We're just going through life on saying whatever we feel like saying, doing whatever we feel like doing. And then coming home at night before going to bed saying, I can't live this life this way. I'm not getting any better. Well, you have to think about how you're going to get better. You got to give yourself that time, that, that moments of self-reflection, right? Trading is exactly yeah. the same way, isn't it? Yeah, and and I think sometimes people avoid self-reflection because sometimes, or even most of the time, honesty is really when you're being honest with yourself. Sometimes it could be very, very scary because you're. It's like admitting something that you have never admitted to anyone else before, and only you yourself know that part of yourself. And to actually address that, sometimes it's not as easy as, uh, as it is. And people try to avoid that. And that's, that's just not a healthy way of living, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about some of these uh, skills that you guys do for self-reflection and post-analysis. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share, share mine and I want to hear how you guys do it as well. Because I'm curious of what steps do you guys take? All right. How many of you guys have seen me go to Maldives? All the time. All the time, right? Now, do you know why I go to Maldives? Now, to a, to a normal person, Maldives is like honeymoon destination. <laughs> it's like, that's where you go after you get married and you go once in a lifetime. I go there literally all the time. Why? And I, I, I wish I can get the staff of, of all these resorts I go to to come online and tell you what I actually do in these resorts. What do I do there? But... Why I go there is I live in Dubai right now. Many places that I go, I'm always working. If I'm in a restaurant, sometimes the staff rec recognize me from that restaurant. It's like, oh, you're the guy from YouTube, uh, Urban Forex. I got a few questions, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes on from there. Then I finish that conversation and some people from the prop firm, they need help. I need to get on a call. I have a question about this trade. We do that. Sometimes there's some work that needs to be done at Urban Forex or some work you know, accounting paperwork needs to be done for my firm here in, uh, in Dubai. So it's constantly busy, 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 where every three months or, or so, I got to take a break and pull back, go to Maldives, secluded onto an island. Internet is bad. So I can actually say, oh, I can't get on a call, guys. My internet's bad. And now I'm forced to just sit there, look at the ocean and look back and be like, what am I doing wrong with my trading? What's the purpose of my trading? Why am I even doing it? Should I be trading a smaller time frame? Should I be trading a higher time frame? How often do I want to trade? Am I paying too much in commissions? Things I would never think about just by being busy, I think about in those moments. And then those moments have become the most precious to me, where it's like this post analysis is the best because it's a lot it's sort of like a life post analysis as well not just trading and they become the most precious to me because that's what helps me to excel faster than the average person because i take that time to self-reflect and be like 
what am I doing wrong? How can I help people better and faster? As much as I want to help every single person out there, I can't answer every single email. I can't sit with everyone an hour a day. It's not humanly possible. So how do I do it? And that's where the daily examples came from one of those meditations where I said, I'm going to provide that repetition in a way that in our course, never been done before, we're going to do it. How are we going to do it? We'll find the resources to pull together and we'll get, we'll get it done. And that's why this year we came up with the daily example sets, right? So what are your, what have, what are some of your guys' tools on how you do post analysis, whether for your trading, what are your, you know, tips and tricks and hacks that you would like to share with everybody on how you self-reflect for your trading or otherwise? Lucas? So generally what I do is um, I'll look at my analysis mm -hmm. um, before taking the trade and see what I was actually looking at. Um, because like we all know, when we are in a trade, we could be doing stuff that we are not intending to do, that kind of stuff. So I'll, uh, after the trade is done, I'll rewatch uh, what I actually spoke about before taking the trade, that analysis, and then see if I actually did what I wanted to do. And then if I was following my plan, then that's a good job. I'll re reinforce myself to do the same thing again. But if I'm not doing the same thing uh, as I planned, then I'll try and figure out why I'm not doing the same thing. Was there uh, something between me taking the trade and uh, after the trade is done where something went wrong with my read or some colleague, colleagues just messaged me and say, oh, this trade is not going to work. That's why I closed the trade, that kind of thing. Mm. So I'll, I'll try and figure out if the plan is followed like how I wanted it to. Right. And if it's not followed like how I wanted it to, then I'll try and make any fixes necessary. Right, right. You do that in, um, do you do it just video format or do you do outside video format as well? Um, most of my trades I do it in a video format. And then during the weekends, I'll take screenshots of the trades and then write a small journal over it just to reinforce what I need to learn and what I need to do going forward. Okay, good. See, stuff like that, that's pro, right? That's pro. What, what normal person does that unless they're told to do that? You see what I mean? The average person doesn't take that self-responsibility to say, I wanna be better, therefore I must do this. They go to college because mom and dad told me to go to college. They go to work because my wife forced me to go to work. Like they, they do everything because someone tells them to do so. But when you take upon yourself that you actually want to be better and you take those steps needed to be better and not just keep looking for opportunity. Oh man, it does wonders. It does wonders. Uh, Ian, what is your uh, experience with it? Uh, first, uh, I think the one main thing I try and do um, is I'll never, for myself anyway, I'll never do my post analysis like straight away, like right after, like whether it was a win or a loss, I'll, I'll almost always take 24 hours Okay. Uh, in between times just to like, then I know my emotions aren't involved anymore and I can come back to the charts and, and, and reanalyze basically with a clear head, um, you know, depending on if there was a loss or a win, maybe I'll take time away from trading or not. But, um, but when I come back, I'll re and also while I'm in the trade, I'll, I'll sometimes record myself how I manage it while I'm so I, I get that I get that um, in trade emotions because there's always like different things going on in your head, you know, at the time that you're trading more so than before and after. So when I come back. Um, I'll reanalyze the market again with a fresh mind and then see how that compares with my pre-analysis and my, my mid-trade videos and see, am I reading it differently now and, and figure out whether I was right, wrong and where I can improve. That, that's generally my the steps I take with all my, usually video format too. Okay, great, great. Yeah, fantastic. Like these are good pointers, right? These are good pointers. All right. I want to turn this into a little bit more fun thing. Okay, Armo, I'm going to do a quick round of fire, quick questions, and you're going to have to answer them in a split second, okay? Oh, dear. All right. 
The topic is, would you hire me for your prop firm? Okay. Armel, I am a trader. I've that done was 10. The first question or? No, I, all of these things I'm stating is going to be related to that. Okay, related to that question. Would you hire me for your prop firm? Okay. So, Armel, I am a very good trader. I'm extremely profitable. I've done 10,000 trades. I have done 4,000 post analysis. Would you hire me? Uh, only if you did the 4,000 post analysis on the last 4,000 trades. Okay. Okay. Oh. Nice. Oh. Nice. All right. Armo, um, I've done 10,000 trades. I'm extremely profitable, um, but I've done all my post analysis in here. I know what I'm doing wrong. No. Okay. All right. Armo, I am a developing trader. I'm a developing trader and uh, I have a 50% win rate. I promise you I will be the best trader I can be. I, I need you to hire me. Trust me, I'm going to be the hardest working person. I've done 2,000 trades this year so far. I haven't done any post analysis, but if you need me to, I can do it. Would you hire me? There's a lot of trusting going on, so probably not. Okay. Okay. Now let's end with from the five people that you like to hang out with, would you even choose to hang out with me? Uh, who, who, what personality are we talking about? The, the last one? <laughs> no. Actual Naveen Prithiani. <laughs> no, no, no not, not Naveen Prithiani. I, I'm just saying that trader who's coming up to you, would you even hang out with that person? Uh, no, he talks too much without saying much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, thanks. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you see, this is the current state of many, many, many people out there. Do we agree? I, I swear, man, just give me a chance. I'll prove it to you. Why would you prove it to me going forward? Why can't you prove it to me with what you've done so far? Why do you always need to prove to me in the future? What about up until now? What have you done? Right? So when we're running our prop firm on our end, I run through these same questions in my mind where everyone who's coming up to the prop firm has great intentions. Everyone's a nice guy. Why would I hire them? Why would I hire them? What, what is it that makes them better? And if I teach them certain tips and tricks, how do I know they will develop on it and become better and be the next seven figure trader? I don't know. It's a gamble, right? It, it comes down to two things and that's data and mindset. And one can complement the other. They don't uh, both have to be at a very high level. If, if one of them is at a high level, the other one can be a little bit lower. Absolutely. Absolutely. They need to be together, I would say. Um, and yeah, data they data with the right mindset. Be, yeah, they both need to be there to some extent, uh, but one can be a little bit higher than the other. Absolutely. All right, Armo, I am a trader. I am, <laughs> I am not very profitable. I am just slightly profitable. I've done 1000 trades. I've done 1,000 post analysis in video format, and I've also recapped them on the weekends with another 1,000 screenshots following it. Would you please hire me? And I want to get better. I know you know what to do. Would you hire me? Yes. Yes, okay. please. Now, notice, notice how why Armo is saying yes to that individual, even though he is not claimed to be as highly profitable as all the other people. Interesting, isn't it? You go, you go on a person who has the skill sets to grow. You don't go on a person who got lucky. Okay. You don't bank a bankroll on a person who won the lottery, but you get, you go after a person that says, Oh, this guy has been proven over and over again, that this guy has got the skills that can be better and better and better. Yeah. Somebody who well, knows how to do the heart surgery and not somebody who won the lottery. <laughs> it was like, yeah, basically, yeah, over and over again, it comes back to that damn doctor. <laughs> he's, also, he's also showing the desire to do it himself. It's, he's not having someone else ask him to do it. So it's like, you know, that he wants this for himself because he, no one's he's self-motivated and, and, and willing to work at it. So that goes a long way too. Absolutely. It's a natural growth mindset. It is. And th the fact that he's approaching you after doing all of that stuff actually shows you signs of there is a huge growth potential in that individual. 
it's very strange because the, time, the amount of emails that we get saying, please train me. Um, I want to be better. I know you can help me and I'm going to do whatever you need me to do. I want to help everybody. I just can't. These are wrong mindsets. These are wrong mindsets to take under my wing and saying, I got you. From this day onwards, I want you to quit your job. I want to stick with, stick with me. I'm going to tell you everything you need to do and keep going. Just stay on track. You'll be fine. But we don't get that. We don't get that, right? Not one. Not one. Not one. It's interesting. It's in in interesting how the industry is. But the flip side is, can you get to the other side? Is it hard or easy? No, it's easy. It's it's not like some talent that, you know, you're either born with or not. You know, this is something that you can just start doing and make it a habit. Yeah. Okay. Can we learn how to record our screens? Absolutely. How difficult is that? If I don't know how to do it, find someone who can teach me how to do it. I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it going. Right. I don't need to show it to everybody. I just, it's, it's for me. It's my personal thing. Right. All right. So Mariana Mendez is saying hard work beats talent. You guys agree? Yeah. hundred percent. Any day, yeah. any day. Okay. Hard work definitely beats talent any day. Because talented people generally get lazy. That's they what call it sweat behind. equity, right? Sorry? They call it sweat equity. Sweat equity? Yeah, <laughs> sweat equity. There you go. There you go. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to, you know, thank you guys for coming on to the podcast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this now into a webinar where we're going to talk more about uh, how to do post analysis in a correct way. I'm going to show some examples on how we do post analysis in the elite community. And I'll show some post analysis onto our prop firm on how our traders do their post analysis and what they and how they approach it. OK, sounds good. So if those of you guys listening in, if you want to watch the entire webinar, um, then it will be posted below this podcast. OK, or if you're watching this on YouTube, the link will be below the video as well. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Let's now move on to the webinar. Thank you guys here, Armo, Lucas, Ian. Yeah. I'll take over from here. Yeah. See you guys.